So let's look at page seven and number seven and eight at the bottom. So it's talking about this borderland of thought. So this is the journey's end. We have referred to it as the real world, and yet there's a contradiction here. In that the words, the whole idea of the world, implies a limited reality a partial truth, a segment of the universe made true. It is because knowledge makes no attack upon perception. So, back up to our non-existing illustration here. As I said before, another word that we could use up for above the line is knowledge. Right? Again, the Course draws a very clear distinction between knowledge and perception. So perception is what happens with uh, our senses and with the mind, which picks out things in the world and then gives description to those things within the world. So we're talking about reaching a state in which we are not doing that. Uh, pure knowledge is just uh, awareness without these uh, forms of definition. Um, Let's go on to the next page. All right. It is a judgment of truth upon illusion of knowledge upon projection. That's a part of the bottom. Let me start. The very bottom is seven. I'm sorry. And then on to eight. Nothing the Son of God believes can be destroyed. But what is true to him would be brought to the last <clears throat> comparison that he will ever make, the last evaluation that will be possible, the final judgment upon this world, it is a judgment of truth upon illusion, of knowledge upon perception. The final judgment is that truth is true, and uh, that everything else is illusion, that everything that comes out of the perception, that everything comes out of the ego is illusion, which means uh, that it never was true. It has no past. It has no reality. And the next paragraph. It has no meaning and does not exist. This is not your decision. <clears throat> it is but a simple statement of a simple fact. It's not even a matter of decision. It's just a matter of seeing that what is true is true. But in this world, there are no simple facts because what is the same and what is different remain unclear. And then let's skip down to uh, the middle part there. Salvation stops just short of heaven, for only perception needs salvation. Heaven was never lost, and so cannot be saved. One of the ways that I've talked about this in the past in a very simple way is to say, does the caterpillar, rem I mean, let me rephrase that. Does the butterfly remember the caterpillar? Let's assume no. <laughs> okay? So the butterfly is this beautiful, this free creature that's flying around that has the, the sun and the sky and the flowers and the, the world of, of that available to it. Whereas the caterpillar was this worm thing that was crawling up on the side of the, the stem. So it's interesting what we think of when we try to think of something that goes beyond the human. We still make it human. <laughs> like for, we create angels. Okay, but we put wings on them. Right? So this way, because this now gives us a whole nother dimension of freedom. You can fly. Does some of you have flying dreams? Yes. I ho aren't they wonderful? 
Yeah, because the, the, the flying dreams are so, you feel so free. Within, you're so literally so light. Right? That's why the, the long, uh, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Right? So, <laughs> well, that's the same idea, you know. So it's it's to take ourselves lightly, to not take ourselves seriously, it means that the mind is now free, and the mind can fly. So the whole image that the course that's giving us here is that we are kind of trapped uh, in a world, in space, in time. Again, none of this is true. Yeah, there's, there's no world. That's why it said on the previous page uh, that we refer to this as the real world, but there's a contradiction in the use of words here because wor world implies something that we think of as being a physical thing. We are, we are moving beyond anything that's physical at all. It does use the word universe, though, which is sort of interesting. Uh, the Course uses the word universe in two ways. It uses it once to, to talk about the universe as a cosmos, which we understand. But it also talks about the universe of universes. <laughs> now, that's what, that what, what's the universe of universes? It doesn't really say. And by the way, it says in this chapter, and this kind of go back to what you were saying a while ago, uh, Elizabeth, there's parts of this, it says in here, look, you can't figure it out. <laughs> you know, so, you know, really don't even try to figure it you know, don't, you know, we, we, we do need to have reason to figure out why we've screwed things up so we can undo we can bring reason into undoing the mess that we create in the world, but there's a certain dimension in which we start getting deeper into the metaphysical principles, like the understanding that there's no time, which doesn't seem to make any sense to us. On, but still, we, let's just accept the fact that there's no time, okay? Just accept the fact that there's this, this possibility for, for perfection. We are so trapped, well, first of all, in time, one of the ways we get trapped, we start thinking that there's minutes, seconds, hours. There's no such thing. We create measuring devices, and then you think the measuring device is representation of reality. It has nothing to do with it. Days are a little harder because, I mean, obviously there seem to be days, right? Because the, the Earth turns around, but if you were on a different planet, it would be different kinds of, you know, days. It would last much longer or much shorter or whatever it is. So it all gets it made up depending upon where you're standing within it. Yes? I would suggest you go to Iceland yeah. if you want to lose your concept of days. Uh, why? Because Take the mic. We have, because you've got to get on the microphone. Um, if you want to lose your concept of days. Oh, you, you mean in terms of night? Yeah. So we measure it. It's, you're just either in all dark or all light or a little bit. Right, right. I did have that experience in Alaska for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. Lights. Right. True. The, the, so there's just like this this constancy then. Right. All right. Let us go back to uh, reading on eight. Salvation stops just short of heaven, for only perception needs salvation. Heaven was never lost, and so cannot be saved. So heaven is in the mind. And what is in the mind can never be lost. There's another way that the Course talks about this in the very beginning. Is that ideas leave not their source. Okay, So an idea cannot leave its source. So that's, that's, that is the implication that we're making things up through the process of the projection. We're making up everything that we see. That then creates what we in the Course refer to as the dreaming of the world. Let's go on the bottom of eight. Yet who can make a choice between the wish for heaven and the wish for hell, and he recognizes they are not the same? In this term, you, you could think of it as, uh, think of heaven as being light and hell as being uh, heavy, <laughs> right? One is pulling us down and one, is, and one is lifting us up, literally, in terms of the mind, right? This difference is the learning goal this Course has set. It will not go beyond this aim. Its only purpose is to teach 
what is the same and what is different, leaving room to make the only choice that can be made. The only choice that can be made is ultimately is for heaven, is for love, is for the truth. It's to get out of the, out of the heaviness and out of the dream. And looking on to nine. There is no basis for a choice in this complex and overcomplicated world. For no one understands what is the same and seems to choose and seems to choose where no choice really is. That there is a choice is an illusion. Now that's a really interesting point. So I've mentioned several times that this uh, death experience that I had in 1976. And there was a part in that experience where this was a part of my experience, and I think it's a part of all of our experiences all the time, but we don't see it. I'm going to read you one paragraph from this uh, book that's coming up. This is, I'm describing what's going on in this experience. For every decision I made, I am congratulated for having reached the right conclusion. Then shown the paradoxical nature of my decision, I then find myself standing over a new proposition, which makes my original position so inconsequential, I am sure that I have erred, even though I have chosen quite rightly. Indeed, the only way I could have chosen. It is clear that I have made the right decision, which is wrong. <laughs> that is, I cannot help but making the right decision even when it is the wrong one. Each time this happens, I roll over and turn out another way. Each change of form brings a new perception, a new identity, which I begin to grasp, only to lose it to another form. It's very hard to know what is having this experience. So what I'm saying is simply is you can't help but make the right choice even when it's the wrong choice. Because the wrong choice is simply a detour, which will get, you are still going home. You are still going to get home. It's just that you have temporarily made this choice, right? So let's say that we're, uh, we're on the way to, to heaven here, and for some reason you decided to take this choice that's kind of this bumpy road down here, so you're, no long, you're not on the main road anymore. You're, you've made a choice that's leading you into uh, the valley of the darkness, that we say, whatever that, what that is. But you'll, you will get back to the main run. And the reason you'll get back to the main run is because of GPS. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> God's plan for salvation, that's GPS, is always working. And it's always, you are always being given the right direction. Even when you make the wrong decision. The very instant you make the wrong decision, the right direction is given to you. But you just, but you have to do what GPS is, is, is asking that you do. If you can do what GPS is, and, that, and that's what the whole course is about. It really is what the whole course is about. It's very, very simple. It's just do what God is asking you to do. How simple could it get? Right? Just, but then you're going to come up and you're going to say, well, I don't know what God, but you do know. The truth is that you do know, and you could follow it, and if you just listened, if you get, kind of get quiet enough, long enough, and sometimes you don't even have to get, doesn't even take a long time to become aware of what the right choice is. And there's a one way, very, very clear way to know when it's the wrong choice, and that is that you will feel guilty. If you make a wrong choice, you will, it will not, there'll be something in you that says, this is not, this is not right. There'll, there'll be an awareness on, on a deeper level that you have actually chosen out of selfishness rather than out of self-fullness. Is it possible so, to give like an example? Oh, yes, we have to have microphones here. No, no, but we have to for this. Uh, that, is it possible? No, I'm not. Is it possible to give some kind of an example, like um, in your life, uh, like you went to the store and the clerk said this, and 
or, or something like that. Well, maybe. Let me think about that. Uh, hold on to that until we need it for somebody else, okay? Again, I think we, we do know when we're making, you know when you're doing something selfish, right? Because there's a part of you that nags you when you do that. Just, <laughs> I actually had an experience this, all right, there you go, on this past week. Uh, on Monday, I was out running errands. And um, I thought, well, I've, I haven't had lunch, and maybe it would be good to have lunch before I go home. And uh, there's a place I know that I could go to. And I thought, but I really don't have time to do that. I really need to get back to work. And this, I heard this voice say, do the right thing. Now, how many times do we hear that voice? Just do the, just do the right thing, all right? Well, I went home, and by golly, I hadn't been home more than five minutes, and a fellow showed up that I had an appointment with <laughs> that I thought was the next day. <laughs> Is that clear? I mean, just, but there's that voice that's in there, and but <laughs> just do the right thing. The right thing was to go home. Right, because it was a real good reason for it, even though I was, even though I thought it was just to get back to work again. <laughs> yes, Latrice. Yeah, give her that. Um, I just wanted to say that um, when I think about what you have here in the paragraph, there's a scripture that says, uh, "Even when I make my bed in hell, you know, that God is there." So this mm -hmm. reminds me of that. Yeah. Even when I'm, exactly, even when I make my bed, bed in hell, God is there. That's true, because God cannot not be there, right? So the right direction cannot but be there. So I've said before that the, the course is about simply raising our level of awareness. So that the, the more that you do raise the level of awareness, then the less and less likely it is that you're going to be making choices which are going to lead you down the wrong path. And the more and more likely it is that you're going to be make, making choices that are going to be satisfying, not only to you, but to everybody that you're coming in contact with as well. Because you're going to be making <coughs> loving choices, and so those loving choices will have love, loving consequences for the other people that we come in contact with as well. Right? It's so very, very simple. Again, the root of the root <laughs> of the problem that we all have, we refer to it in here as the ego, but as I've said in the past, the, re, oh, the best word I think is selfishness. Right? You're either, selfishness is breaking away, self-fullness is moving toward the whole. You're doing something, it, it's, you think about it, would, would this action hurt anyone? Would it hurt the whole? If it would, then I don't go there. Yes, uh, Suki. Okay. Well, you need the mic for two, dear. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's right here behind you. Yeah. No, right there. Oh, okay. There. Hello, hello. Magically okay. <laughs> what if you're not making an evil choice? You're just afraid. What if you're scared and you just feel like, I can't do this. I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. Where does that fit in? Well, it's the same place and the same thing. So, in the beginning of the Course in Miracles, is the opposite of love is fear. Okay, so another way we could express this is say, is my decision coming out of love or is it coming out of fear? All right. If it's coming out of fear, then I don't want to go there either. Let me give you a good example of the fear element that uh, we all have seen working uh, in this nation in the past few weeks. Uh, and that is guns. Okay, so some people are shot, killed, and the next thing you know, uh, a lot of folks are out buying more guns. This seems to be because, but what's it for? It's for defense, it's out of fear, right? So out of fear, and what's the fear? The fear is that you're going, to, if you don't do that, that somehow or another somebody may take your body, may, may destroy your body, right? So it's all about the body. <laughs> it's all about protecting the body. It's all about keeping the body. It's all about mine. 
my, my home, my security, my, my world, whatever it is, right? And the Course in Miracles says, in defenselessness, my safety lies. And in terms of the Course in Miracles, and this may sound radical, but it's not, what Jesus is doing on the cross is he is showing us, look, they can kill this body, but that doesn't kill me, right? Because I transcend the whole, the, it, you can't kill the, the spirit, you can't kill the mind, right? So the body, it, there's a song by, a hymn by Martin Luther, the last line of which goes, the body they may kill, God's truth abideth still, right? The, the, and it's the truth that, the, that abideth that's really the important thing. We get so afraid. We, we, the, you watch the preppers on television that are building all these uh, underground shelters and stocking food and supplies, and it's all about there's something in the world that is, that's going to come and attack me, so I'm going to do it. And then they spend their whole lives building a defense system. I was watching this one. The guy was well into his 80s, and he was so disappointed because it was pretty clear that he was going to die and never get a chance to use this incredible system that, that he had set up for all his food that he had down there in this shelter. And, uh, but he was hopeful. <laughs> hopeful that maybe his grandchildren <laughs> would be able to use the shelter that he had spent, his, he called it the ark. It was an ark, like a Noah's ark kind of thing, that he had built all this for. Well, that's insanity. It, the, the insanity is that we're looking for the outside as, as reality. And of course, America is going to say, it's not, it's not out there. There's, there's nothing out there. There's nothing of importance out there at all. So you're a, a big political figure. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything, right? It's just, a, it's just the ego again in search of uh, power, or it's come, it comes out of, another word is arrogance, right? Which we simply don't need. Humility is what's needed, not, not arrogance. It's the moving, we're moving in the wrong direction. Right? <clears throat> so let's go back to this. <clears throat> uh, where did I leave off? On the bottom of eight? Did I do it? read nine yet? I don't think so. Yeah, but that's what we were just talking about, the top of nine. <clears throat> yeah, the choice of illusion. You can't help but make the right choice, but, you, but at the same time that that's true, even though there's some, it feels good to know that you can't help but make the right choice even when it's the wrong choice, uh, still we want to learn how to not make the wrong choices so that we don't have to continue to wallow in some sort of miserable place. We want to be able to be free of that. So we're making better and better and better choices as time goes. Because you're making choices which are in alignment with love, which are in alignment with uh, the whole. And now to the bottom part of nine. All illusions are but one, and in the recognition of this, so lies the ability to, to give up all attempts to choose between them and to make them different. How simple is the choice between two things so clearly unalike there is no conflict here. No sacrifice is possible in the relinquishment of an illusion recognized as such. So we're recognizing that this is an illusion. Once you recognize it's an illusion, again, what do you lose when you lose an illusion? Nothing. <laughs> because you didn't have anything in the first place. Now let's go to 10. I want to mention Gene Klein. Gene Klein's one of the mystics that are talked about in this book. Has anybody heard it? No, Gene Klein? Uh, oh, good. A couple of you. Um, Gene Klein was uh, a, a medical doctor and a musician. You can see his dates are 1916 to 1998, almost identical to uh, Robert Adams, which I read a moment ago. They were a year off. Um, he was responsible also for helping thousands of people escape from Germany. Uh, during World War II, and he was uh, regarded as being uh, an enlightened person. And one day he was giving a, a lecture, and 
uh, somebody in the group uh, raised their hand to ask him a question. And they said, you seem to be so calm and serene, but me, I have all kinds of problems and difficulties. Uh, what's the difference between us? And Gene said, you say, well, you think that you are somebody and I know that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that, the more we think that we are some body, and that's, the Course talks about that in terms of specialness, right? The more we think that we're special in some sort of a way, that that then uh, puts us above uh, anybody else, the more illusion. So again, we're all equal. It's all the same. No, no one is better than anyone else. Okay. Let's go down to uh, where sin has left. And to uh, forgiveness is this world equivalence of heaven's justice. It translates the world of sin into a simple world where justice can be reflected from beyond the gate behind which total lack of limit lies. So forgiveness is the tool. It's never forget. They never forget that forgiveness is the tool. Forgiveness is the mechanism that undoes. Everything, the moment that we can do it, the moment, and all the forgiveness means is letting it go. Not being attached, not being stuck, not, not holding on to anything that we think that we need to hold on, to, holding on to fears. Letting the fears go. That's what paranoia is. Paranoia is that we can't let go of the fears. We think that the fears are real. And the truth of the matter is there's nothing to be afraid of, but that's not true for the paranoid mind. It takes a lot of work for the paranoid mind to be able to make this, this jump out of the fear. And, back in, and what the task for the paranoid, therefore, is trust. But it's very hard for, for your paranoid to trust. But that's nevertheless the, the, the job. You've got to trust that things make sense even when they don't make sense. Okay? That there's reason behind things that we don't see the reason behind as long as I'm moving in the right direction. And the bottom of 10. Forgiveness turns the world of sin into a world of glory, wonderful to see. Each flower shines in light, and every bird sings of the joy of heaven. There is no sadness, as there is no parting here, for everything is totally forgiven. This is describing uh, heaven, and here's our flower man over here on the right. <laughs> In the top of 11, what is heaven but a song of gratitude and love and praise by everything created to the source of its creation? That's all this, the song of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's look down a little bit at, the, at the, the little hindrance, the part in yellow. All learning is a help or hindrance in the gate of heaven. Nothing is between Nothing in between is possible. There are two teachers only. So the two teachers, obviously, are the ego and the Holy Spirit, who point in different ways. One saying, we'll go this way, let's, let's, let's head toward home, and the other was saying, no, let's create your own home. <laughs> let's make your own castle. You know, let's, let's create, create your own world. Some of you may remember, I told a story once about... Uh, going to see Ken up at uh, Roscoe. This is in like 1993, I think it was. And we sat down at a table next to uh, the lake. And the first words that he said to me was, uh, how's your kingdom? <laughs> and I blew it. <laughs> I didn't quite get it. I said, fine, how's yours? <laughs> I said, I don't have a kingdom. Right? Or another way to express it was the only kingdom was God's kingdom. Right? And I got it going home in the car. I got, ah, oh, that's what he meant. <laughs> there is only one kingdom. You know, it's this kingdom. It's, it's, it's this one here. And, then, and that you don't, if you have, you, see, that's the, the misery of creating your own kingdom is that you're kind of locking yourself into a... Remember back when these days, what was that show where the guy with the millionaires, he would go around interviewing all the richest people in the world? 
it's no longer on. It was back 20 years ago or so. What? Robin Leach. What was the show called? Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> I remember w once watching R R Robin Leach, and he was uh, interviewing some guy who had the rich and famous, right? I mean, who'd, who'd obviously uh, had it all, had uh, billions of dollars that he'd somehow know they accumulated in the course of his life. And he was in his mid-60s, and they were on his yacht, and, but he had some bad health news. So the only thing the guy could talk about, the only thing he could think about the fact was, well, I worked so hard, and I created all this, and I got all this, and here I am on my yacht, and I could die soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's like, you know, I, the doctors are saying, no. <laughs> and that's the only you could think about, was the fact that, you know, you got the world, you did the stuff, but what do you got? You got something that, that if you disappear, that's going to disappear. I had a, another experience, someone that once I'd gone to give a talk in, um, Oklahoma City, actually, and I never sometimes know who I'm going to stay with because I pin pun. I just stay with different individuals, and uh, so I followed this lady back to her, which was a castle with a moat. <laughs> Honest to God, there was a moat around this thing, right, with a drawbridge. <laughs> <laughs> that her husband had built, <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> and he was only like 54 years old or something, right? And he left everything to her. And the children were very upset. <laughs> because, and, and she was asking, ask, asking my advice, what, what am I going to do? Uh, it really belongs to the kids, his kids. It, uh, but he left it to me. <laughs> well, they eventually settled it after. But guess who won? No, oh, the lawyers. <laughs> the lawyers won. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to figure out whether I was having hallucinations or not. Yeah, wait, wait. Yeah. You gotta have the mic. Did Ken stop here once several years ago? Stop you, here. I mean, did you bring him into? No, the never. No, you were yeah. hallucinating for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, intro you introduced somebody special, and I was trying to remember who it was. I don't know whether it was this group or the or the Saturday group. Uh, but okay. No, no, okay. Ken. Uh, although Ken only lived four blocks from where we are right now, which was sort of uh, interesting. He lived so close to where we are at the moment, right? Um. One of the things, by the way, that I do plan on doing in the fall after we complete this is I, I, I am going to have more guests come along as well, like a couple of guests that I've had uh, before. Um, not only uh, Rod, but, but some others as well. I think I'd like to introduce you to people that I think are doing really good work uh, with the course because they have really good, and some of whom are, are very local. So let's go to 12 and the top of 12. Nothing is ever lost but time, which in the end is meaningless. Just like things. Just like the exterior, or just like the, the outside stuff, right? That's all going to be lost. The bodies will be lost. The things will be lost. The times as well. For it is but a little hindrance to eternity. It's a little hindrance because, again, we're stuck in time. We're stuck in the story. We're stuck in the drama. In particular, did some of you begin doing the workbook lessons from the course at the beginning of the year? Okay, well then you know that this last week you probably were looking at stuff. I see only the past, right? And how we're stuck. One of the places that we're stuck is in the past. That's with the people that we can't forgive and with our folks and how they did stuff wrong, et cetera. Back to this. For it is but a little hindrance to eternity, quite meaningless to the real teacher of the world. Yet since you do believe it, why should you waste it going nowhere when it can be used to reach a goal as high as learning can achieve? So what we're talking about using is we're talking about using time. We're using time correctly. This, keep in mind, what time is, what the body is and what time is, both, 
The body and time are both tools. They are learning mechanisms. The Course says it very, very clearly. Time is a learning mechanism, the body is a learning mechanism. We use the body and we use time to learn how to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, how to get out of here alive. When I mean alive, I mean capital L with life. You know, how to get deeper into life, which is really the thing that frees us, right? Since you do believe it, why should you waste your waste it going nowhere when it can be used to reach a goal as high as learning can achieve? Think not the way to heaven's gate is difficult at all. Actually, making the right decision at moments to just do the right thing is actually so incredibly simple. It's just a decision. It's just a simple decision to do the right thing, to not pay attention to the ego, and to and to follow the the guidance that you that you're really getting. Nothing you undertake with certain purpose and high resolve and happy confidence holding your brother's hand and keeping step to heaven's song is difficult to do. In fact, is it not only is it not difficult to do, it is joyous to do. It is fun to do. It is like I call dancing with the divine. You know, then you really are, you're dancing with the divine. You're doing what, what God asks you to do. You're, you're loving the world. Well, if you're loving the world, the world's loving you back, right? You can't help but have it happen that way. But it's, it is hard indeed to wander off alone and miserable. And that's like building your own kingdom, creating your own little world or creating your own big world, either way. It's still a man-made stuff that, you, that you've come up with. But it is hard indeed to wander off alone and miserable down a road that leads to nothing and that has no purpose. So even though you get the outside all squared away and all looking very, very beautiful, uh, what, do you, what do you got when the dream ends? And that was just a dream. And let's look at the bottom of uh, 12. Time last. I know this is a very. And we're going to get it really deep in metaphysics here now. Time lasts but an instant in your mind, with no effect upon eternity. That's the whole story. The whole story lasts but an instant in your mind. Your story, with no effect upon eternity. And so is all time past and everything exactly as it was before the way to nothingness was made. Think of how many people have passed through this earth, have lived here, and all the dreams that they all had and all the stories and all the dramas, and they're all gone, just as ours will be. <laughs> and it didn't mean anything except in so far as they found some way to find really like to be fulfilled. And it was fulfilled in so far as they got free of fear and were able to get into love and get deeper into finding the way home. The bottom part of 12. The tiny tick of time in which the first was the mistake was made and all of them within it, within that one mistake, held also the correction for that one. So what they're saying, the very instant that the decision was made to separate from the whole, the correction was put in. There was no space between the false decision and the correction. The correction occurred immediately, but you got to be able to pay attention to the correction. Um, let me start that over again. The tiny take of time in which the first mistake was made and all of them within it, that one mistake, held also the correction for that one and all of them that came within the first and in that tiny instant time was gone for that was all it ever was. What God gave answer to is answer and is gone. It's all gone. I don't think... Let's talk about the, our loved ones who have gone, who have, uh, who have 
of left here. Now, I don't think that they're worried about here <laughs> anymore. I mean, it, 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 they're, literally, it's, it, they're literally not here. That doesn't mean that on some sort of loving metaphysical dimension, you're not still in con contact with your mom, let's say, because in some way, love is uh, all pervasive and, and, and present. And in some sense, that, 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 is, that is true. But not in the sense of being concerned about your drama or your soap opera or what's going on within that uh, context. Hi, Tim. You gotta have a mic if you're gonna to say anything. Uh, and it's there. Um, so you don't think that, that there's any uh, truth to the reincarnation that the loved ones could have been reincarnated to another life and they may not at, at, at that moment remember? Um, say like the, the son is still here, their daughter, and they have passed on, but if reincarnation is real, it could be in another body. Is that is that could that be true? Well, we've talked about this some here in the past, but so let's just very 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 briefly address it. Um, reinc <laughs> reincarnation is true in time, but seeing how there's no time, it's not true. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know that may seem like a lot, but with, so you could say that it's true within the context of the illusion, but it's still an illusion, it's still a dream. And we're really looking to get out of the dream, to transcend it all together so that there is no more. There are places in the Course where it implies reincarnation, implies it. At the same time that that's true, when you get around to the, to the clarification of terms, in the end, the, the paragraph that talks about it says, is reincarnation true or is it so is the word and the first sentence says ultimately there is no reincarnation there's no past there's no future and birth into a body once or many times makes no sense what makes no sense is that we are seeking to escape heaven that we would seek to escape to create an own world to, to build our kingdoms Within the material, so to speak, physical time dimension, yes, but this whole thing is an illusion. So we're really trying to get to transcend all of that. You could say that there's you could reincarnation in the past, but that the, the past is an illusion. Can, can I, <laughs> Jim? Can I add something James. to that, John? All right, and then over here to James. Um, this idea of reincarnation. Um, what's coming to me is that. The learning that we have been willing to surrender to God and to that extent that our heart has been freed of guilt and fear, when the body is laid aside, where we left off, we pick back up. And we leave off and pick back up, leave off and pick back up until we get to the place where we have completely accepted atonement for oneself and we wake. So in other words, we sleep until we wake. I like that. Yeah. That's a good way to, that's the way. But in the, so, but this, in the sleep there are dreams. Yeah. Right, so, right, so we're, so we're dreaming all along. So the question is, you know, so I, I dream I have a life as a soldier, I dream I have a life as a slave, I dream I have a life as a, but they're all dreams. James. Our, our separation is one instant. Yes. One instant. That's what it said right here. All the reincarnations, here. everything, In everything's happening all just right. One instant. It's one mistake we have to correct. That's right. It's already over. That's Time right. Time is over. God's waiting for us to wake up. We're making it difficult. We get reincarnation, this, this past life, whatever it is, forgive in this moment. Forgive everything the best you can. Work on your forgiveness. Work on it. Work on it. Work on it. <clears throat> I know I need to work on it, right? But that's our key out of it. We're in an illusion, an instant the, the, the mistake has been corrected the second it happened. God just wants us to wake up. Right. He's waiting there for us, and it's been there, and it cannot not be there. Right. Thank you. Yeah, James, the guy. It's not a matter of analyzing the dreams and what's going on with the context of the dream. It really is. Just, it, 
that's what this just said that we that we read here a moment ago. I said that you know the correction was there at the instant the, the the decision to break away from God occurred in that same exact instant. The solution was there, and that happened without time. So in that sense, it also, it never even happened. The game's over. Game, game's over. We can all go home now. That's the what game, God wants us. The game's the, over. He leaves the stadium. The show's over. He not, just wants not us to only go is home. It, it, it never started. <laughs> okay, over here. Pass the mic to the back. Back and then front. And then Beverly uh, will take... Uh, Hi, thank you. Yeah. Gina. Tina. Uh, I had asked you about this, actually, before. You did. And after I left, I thought about it, and... I wondered why Jesus, does Jesus have an ego up there? Is he still in an ego that Jesus came down, you know, that no, why Jesus. the rest of us don't if we're all God? The rest of us what? Aren't ourselves in an unbody form if Jesus was still in his ego form, or so to speak. Well, we we, we don't. Know he was less. Yes, we don't think of Jesus as having any. I and the Father are one. That's what he says, right? He's the he representative of the Christ mind. So that's it. I mean, there, there's no. James is right. Nothing ever happened. You know, we never left home. Jesus but, just demonstrated how to give up guilt and relieve his life. He didn't. Jesus had a good time. I'm not talking about him in this <laughs> life. No, he's. He was like he he didn't believe in this life. Most of the things he said to people, the, the modern Christianity flipped the whole thing. You right. Know what I mean, what, what we don't, what what I get and what I found out is he was light and lively. Yeah, give him the mic. That I'm sorry, what Jane. I, I wasn't yeah. talking about the Jesus while he was on this earth. I questioned his identity that he uh, channeled this in a body form that we understand as Jesus. It's the same thing. There's, there's, my, my, I'm sorry, uh, James, but if you're... Jesus gonna... transcended his ego. He was a human being who transcended his ego. Okay? He was here as an example to us. He didn't suffer on the cross. He didn't believe in guilt. He didn't believe in pain. As far as what I understand is even why he got that spear was the Roman soldier got pissed off because he was banging spikes into him and he couldn't feel it. And he's trying to punish this guy. And this guy, well, we our, our version is he's crying, he's downtrodden and he's bleeding. He wasn't feeling anything. He didn't believe in this. This was an illusion. He saw through the illusion. They couldn't touch him. So this torturous, guilt-written interpretation flipped completely the, what <laughs> happened. All right. All right. And that's all he was. He in his life transcended this. And he was trying to show us this ain't happening, buddy. He was like, just hey, come on. You know, he and he would say things to certain people and not to other people because he, and he would tell them and say, Don't tell anybody else this because they're gonna kill you. They'll kill you. Because he knew that the ego was out there and everything like that. Jesus right. transcended this. And right. that's what he came down to show. We are him. He he saw us as him, okay? And he wanted to show us that this wasn't happening, that you had go home and we're connected to God. So if you believe a, a Course in Miracles, he's still trying to get the message across. Yes. 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 I mean, he's, we're he's, in a <laughs> major <laughs> celestial correction. He is still, still telling us the same thing, right? John. But we have to be able to, to see it. Who's got the mic? Oh. One, one other thing. But keep in mind, Jesus never came down to the earth. None of us came down to the earth. Jesus is a figure dream within our dream who demonstrated perfectly within an extreme example of hatred and projection that we have a choice. So Jesus is within the mind in our dream helping us to choose resurrection. Very that good. there is atonement in resurrection, not in crucifixion. So it's, it's not here. It's mind. Right. It's, he's in here. It's, yeah. it's, it's literally all mind. All right, Arlen, Beverly, and uh, you guys got to have the mic, though. Okay, pass it up to Beverly. On the front row. 
It's coming. It's there. Sorry to ask a question that probably you've already discussed, but I'm probably. kind of a novice to all this. Yes, probably you have. I'm having trouble making the distinction since there's no wrong choices and we have that GPS and we're all going home anyway. What difference does anything make? Well, it makes a lot of difference in terms of whether you're happy or unhappy. So the thing is just wait and you'll be happy, right? <laughs> yeah, but why, there's a line in the Course where it says, why wait for heaven? Ah. You know, why wait to be happy? Ooh, why wait to be realized? Why, why continue to muck about that's true. in the dream? But that, I guess that begs the larger question, why do we recycle all the time? And what's Well, the that's kind of what James is doing, but the yeah. point is that you don't have to keep recycling. You can stop the recycling Whose idea stuff. was that? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. And the you. ego, is, it all starts and stops, this is what we just learned here, with this simple decision. I think it's possible to think a thought outside of the mind of God. Not possible. You cannot think a thought outside of the mind of God. You can try to think a thought outside of the mind of God. Trying to think a thought outside of the mind of God is the thing that gave rise to this whole world and every aspect of it, all of our bodies and all the story, all of history, everything was in that one moment. And in that same moment, as James said, the correction also occurs. But you've got to be able to see it. So in the meantime, we're caught in time. But yet we're all forms of God, so who gave us this idea? Why would you think this was such a great idea to do this nonsense? It's not a good idea, obviously, no. right? And the, I know this sounds really heavy or really... It actually <laughs> never happened. It, none of it ever happened, which is the dream. I know it's all metaphysics. They pass it back to, to Jane, uh, Tim. Um. I don't know whether when you say it's just a dream, whether that can be considered as an answer, but how can, how can that be understood that it had never happened? It seems as if something happened. So how can one find verification, verification that it really did not happen? Okay, so the, happen, word you, 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 the word you use, I try to keep that in front of your mouth. Uh, <laughs> use the word seems. Okay, it seems like it happened. It's a seeming reality, it's not reality. Okay, so again, nothing happened. And again, James is right, it's all a matter of waking up. And when you wake up, you see that it was nothing. Nothing ever happened. And nothing is happening now. <laughs> Even though it looks like something is happening. Let's get the mic over to Shanti. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, give it to her. <laughs> I'll give it to her. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're afraid of. And anyway, I want to be very simplistic, believe it or not. I, I listen to this and I say to myself, <clears throat> what, we're, we're asking a lot of questions and we're looking for the answers. Of course, we're looking to John for the answer. Poor John. Stand there. He's got to defend the Course in Miracles. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I'm using it in a very different sense, and that's uh, very important. I think we have to be very, very careful of what's going on here. When we waken from this dream, which means nothing here ever happened, that's, that's too complex. Let's really make it very simple. You have a point of view. Each and every one of you represents your point of view. Each of you. And you know when you get into an argument, it's your point of view versus my point of view, or his point of view. You know, it's, we've got to be very much more simple, and this means, it means acceptance of the other person's point of view of which you may not agree. That's the most important thing. Think of every argument you've ever had. What you want is to be heard. What you want is to be understood. And what you want is to be accepted. And so does the other person. That's all. It's so utterly simple. It's unbelievable. It really is. In other words, we don't ever have to have an argument. We have to just have an open mind and an open heart and an open ear to hear. Okay? Is, does, does it make any sense to you? Yes. Thank you. Oh, fine. yeah. Try it. Try it. You see, that's not easy. 
That's the discipline, because the ego comes along and says, I don't agree. But I don't not only don't agree, I'm going to kill you because I don't agree. That's what wars are all about. Peace, man, peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, honey. All right, Lily Katz, uh, we're, uh, by the way, I'm, we're, let's skip the second break because at four o'clock we're gonna break and do something else anyhow. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, something that helps me understand this all never happening is like when you go to sleep at night and you have a dream and like weird stuff happens like all your teeth fall out or you you have short hair instead of long hair or your your legs got cut off or something weird like that and you wake up in the morning and you say oh my gosh I'm, I'm glad that was you know it never happened nothing, nothing happened yeah. yeah that's exactly right that's and that's a very good way to see it right uh, let's look on 13 for a moment uh, just hold on to it until it's needed no. They got a mic on this side. They've got this room has got a mic. That's it. All right. Uh, Thirteen. The yellow part. <clears throat> to you who still believe you live in time and know not it is gone. I mean, this is how simple this is answering our question right here. The Holy Spirit still guides you through the infinitely small and senseless maze. You perceive in time, though it is long since gone. You think you live in what is past. That's why we, the lessons from this week in the workbook are about being free of the past, right? The past is where the story is. Each time you look upon, each thing you look upon, you saw but for an instant long ago, before its unreality gave way to truth. Not one illusion still remains unanswered in your mind. Uncertainty was brought to certainty so long ago that it is hard indeed to hold it to your heart as if it were before you still. I like where so we're still we're still dragging the past up. Uh, into the present and saying, look, this is, there's a section in the course, we'll get to it, it's, it's in chapter 29, I think, which talks about it calls present memory. Now let's try to talk about what pre present memory is for a second. Present memory is the, rem the memory of this. The, it's the remember, the memory of heaven is present. Heaven is here, heaven is now. There is no other place and there is no other time. We are simply trying to remember <laughs> <laughs> what is here and now. And that's when, uh, when whenever the mystics have their experiences, that's, that's the experience that they have. They, it's simply a, an experience of being in the present. That's why when Eckhart totally writes The Power of Now and it suddenly becomes a bestseller, it's because he tapped into something that we all know about, actually, but he did a really good job of uh, discussing it and explaining it for us in a way that made sense. Did I see a hand over here? No, okay, good. <clears throat> so, let's go on just a little bit more and then we're gonna do a break. The top of uh, 14. Time seems to go in one direction, but when you reach it, its end, it will roll up like a carpet spread along the path behind you and will disappear. So it seems to be going linear, right? All of a sudden, it all rolls up, right? As long as you believe the Son of God is guilty, you will walk along this carpet believing that it leads to death. The, this is a main problem the Course is talking about. It, it, it's guilt. What the guilt is, is the sense that we have separated ourselves from God. That we have deliberately made that choice. That's the way it looked. God, on the other hand, is simply saying, nothing ever happened. You didn't do anything wrong. I don't blame you for because you're sleeping. You know, why would God get upset because we've fallen into a dream? There's not even any dream going on, but, uh, and God knows that, right? So, he just, as, as, as James said, he's just waiting for it to wake up. Back to this. As long as you believe the Son of God is guilty, you will walk along the, this carpet believing 
that it leads to death, and the journey will seem long and cruel and senseless, for so it is. It is long and cruel and senseless as long as we continue to be caught within the context of the dream. The moment that you see it's a dream and you awake from it, it all changes. Go down to the bottom of 14. The tiny instant you would keep and make eternal passed away in heaven too soon for anything to notice it had come. There's another line in the course where it says, not, a, not one note in heaven's song was missed. So it, it's like we're going along and there's this like, we're, there's this bleep, but actually that bleep never happened. It was just nothing, it was so quick and so instant, the correction was built into the air and so we created an illusion out of that whole thing. Right. And on the top of 15, only in the past, an ancient past, too short to make a world an answer to creation, did this world appear to rise. So very long ago, appear to rise. So very long ago. For such a tiny interval of time that not one note, there it is, in heaven's song was missed. Right? Yet in each unforgiving act or thought, in every judgment and in all belief in sin, is that one instant still called back. So as long as I still believe that it's possible to be separated from God, as long as I still believe that I can make choices and decisions which are in defiance of the will of God, then so am I continue to be stuck within this, uh, within this dream. I'll start that over. Yet in each unforgiving act or thought, in every judgment, in all belief in sin, is this one instant still called back as if it could be made again in time. You keep an ancient memory before your eyes, and he will live in memories alone, and he who lives in memories alone is unaware of where he is. There is no life in a, in a memory. What's a, what's a, what's a you know, one of the things people think that they want to be remembered. <laughs> what the hell is that? I mean, oh, what is it to be remembered? And, and what are you remembering? And, and who are you? All right, let's take, for example, there once upon a time was a man that we have all know about, that the world knows about, uh, called Abraham Lincoln. Okay, and we've there been more stuff written about that guy than almost anybody that walked the face of this. And yet, who knows who that was? I mean, who has any idea? Who has any? Nobody has a could really know what was inside that that person, what was going on there, and any more than anyone knows what's going on inside any the rest of us who are gathered here at the moment, right? So it's all a part of it, and, and so you get a building named after you. You know, you become Lincoln University or uh, Lincoln Highway. Uh, uh, there's more Lincoln stuff than the, <laughs> Lincoln Park and <laughs> statues and the Lincoln Memorial. And the, the <laughs> you think Lincoln cares about that? I mean, the real spirit soul that <laughs> is com that un it's really untouched by all that nonsense. We built statues. There's a statue over here in the park with pigeons poop on that nobody even knows who that is. <laughs> but once upon a time, somebody thought it was important to put that statue there of that soldier on that horse, whoever that was, for whatever that person did that, <laughs> that doesn't matter, right? <laughs> you know, when, when Ken died, there was no funeral. Um, and, you know, Ken would not have wanted there to have been, a, that would have been in keeping with his wishes, that there wouldn't have been a funeral. Because one of the favorite, when he was asked on several occasions if uh, he would write his autobiography, and every time he answered it with, it's not about me, right? So what it's about was about the Course, it's about this teaching and about the learning. It's not about the person, because the person is a part of the dream, right? So it's never about any of us. That's why. Uh, 
the passage I read for you a, a moment ago, Gene Klein could say, you think that you are somebody, and I know that I'm not. See, that's a freedom in that, knowing that you're not, because if you think that you are somebody, then you're caught in the dream. You're, you're dreaming that you are somebody. But that's a trap. Yes, I put that to you. <laughs> Don't wave it around. I, I will try to remember. Yeah, try to remember. Uh, in relation to the Abraham Lincoln erection of the statue, um, couldn't, say, say for example, there was one party that was the initiator of that idea, could it, uh, there could have been um, something felt for Abraham Lincoln and oh, gratitude sure. for it. No, so I understand. That can be valuable. Yes. That can be valuable, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obviously why we do it. We, we do it because we, we say, uh, you know, we want to stand up for the same values and that this individual did, and that's what we're trying to remember. But I meant it in another way, that who this person actually was, no, none of us really know. And neither do, neither do we need to know, right? Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, I think we're going to uh, change uh, gears here a little bit now. <clears throat> Any of you would like to share your uh, cards that you got today? They should have been a card on your um, uh, saying from the Course in Miracles. You didn't get a card? Yes, yes that's it. All right, we'll just we'll share the, uh, all right, I'll try to keep the mic, though, because otherwise, it, where's the mic on this side of the room? No, oh, over here, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So um, I, I saw this card very quickly into the session, and it just really struck me as uh, something so true and beautiful. So here goes. Uh -huh, good. You are the work of God, and his work is wholly lovable and wholly loving. This is how a man must think of himself in his heart, because this is what he is. Okay, that was just great. Sort of a summarization of everything we've been talking about today. Yeah. I want you to just pass it on this side a little bit, and then we'll go to this side a little bit. This okay. made me think of <clears throat> the gentleman we were just reading about. Those who see themselves as whole make no demands. Mm-hmm. Good. Lily Katz, you want to share? The Holy Spirit always sides with you and with your strength. As long as you avoid his guidance in any way, you want to be weak. See, what she just read is another way that I said that earlier is just do the right thing. Okay, the Holy Spirit is always there. Uh, back to Joan. No, <clears throat> nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Amen. And Alan? You want to take the mic? In you is all of heaven. Every leaf that falls is given life in you. Each bird that ever sang will sing again in you. Every flower and, and every flower that ever bloomed has saved its perfume and its loveliness for you. And then nice, that's very beautiful. The course can be really beautiful. But that's also descriptive of the mystical experience again and the unity and the connection, and we begin to see that. Anybody on the back row here want to share before? Um, in shining peace within you is the perfect purity in which you were created. Fear not to look upon the lovely truth in you. All right. Anybody on that side? Uh, All right, then let's go to this side. Who's got the mic over here? Nobody on this side? No. Release from guilt as you would be released. There is no other way to look within and see the light of love, shining as steadily and as surely as God himself has always loved his son. Release and you'll be released is just forgiveness. Just let it go. The world, this world, will change through you. No other means can save it. That's right. It's all a matter of a decision. There's, again, there's, there's a line in the Course that says, Heaven is a decision I must make. <clears throat> when you want only love, you will see nothing else. 
sure I, I'm not sure I understand this. So. Okay, the, let's give it a try. Who, those who remember always that they know nothing and who have become willing to learn everything will learn it. Right. That's what a... And we talked about getting to this kind of this great void or the great emptiness or the lady in the class yesterday who said that she stopped thinking, right? We have to get to the stop thinking point first before we can then move on into the opening up into heaven. That has to occur first. Where we learn everything. Where, where you already know. <clears throat> you already know it all. <clears throat> Can she say where she read that? It's at the bottom. What's a, she wants to know where the passage yeah. is from. Put that to your mouth. Put, put your mouth. Huh? Oh, 299. Is the text or the workbook? 299. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Great. <laughs> you ask these complicated questions. Huh? Uh, oh, my goodness. This is, <clears throat> this is the old, this is cards are based on the old format. Uh, that's all. It's on page two ninety nine. Is all it says. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I said, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> forgiveness. Forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, just a second. Each instant is a clean, untarnished birth, in which the Son of God emerges from the past into the present, and the present extends forever. It is so beautiful and so clean and free of guilt that nothing but happiness is there. That's just gorgeous. Anybody else in the back there? Behind you? Go ahead. The search for truth is but the honest searching out of everything that interferes with truth. Truth is, it can neither be lost nor sought nor found. It is there wherever you are being within you. So as the Course says, you know, we really don't need to uh, search for the truth. Uh, actually, you want to find out what's false and then let that go. And so as we let the false go, the truth automatically takes its place, right? A, and obviously, can I ask a question too? Yes, of course. Um, if we're already in heaven, how can we wake up faster? Do this work. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. I want it. I want it to be even faster, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, forgive is good. Okay. Yeah. Just do what Jesus is asking you to do. All right. Okay. Take this uh, this whole process seriously. Right. Yeah. And don't continue to look for it where it's not. You know, because look look for it where it, where it is going to be, which is inside you, and not your body, but your mind, which already knows. Okay. Um, we're going to change, shift gears here at this point. Uh, Jay, do you want to make a final? But you've got to have the mic to do it. Okay. Um, in relation to what the woman was reading there, that about how does that go again? About the have to know that we know nothing. How, how does it go again? Well, let me read it to be exact. Right. Those who remember always that they know nothing and who have become willing to learn everything will learn it. Okay, what, what came to my mind is if we have a cup and the cup is full of whatever, we can't get, you know, that, that stuff that's in the cup is exactly. going to be invaluable, it's going to be garbage. You can't get anything else exactly. in the cup, you've got to empty the cup. That's and right. Then the truth will fill it. Yep. That's like there's an old... Uh, the truth is all around. Yep. Okay. There's an old Zen saying about that, that, that's similar to that. It's also a line in the Avatar movie, I noticed. <laughs> this comment is not serious, but it's serious. Um, this reminded me of a very old joke. Okay, good. In a, in a synagogue, the chief rabbi was praying by the wall, Oh, Lord, I am nothing. And then the cantor comes in and says, I better pray the same prayer. He says, Oh, Lord, I am nothing. Then the sexton comes in, and he says, why not? He said, oh, Lord, I am nothing. And the rabbi pokes the cane and says, look who thinks he's nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we, 
we're going to do, uh, you don't have to stay for this if you don't want to. Okay, you can, you can leave at this point. Uh, but for those of you who are willing to try to be a little bit more uh, outgoing and uh, loving, uh, Pam is going to lead us in, uh, we're going to do some singing and some dancing, which means we're going to put all the chairs up. <laughs>